speed, efficiency and increased stakeholders engagement are all familiar hot topics in the world of business. But when you bring these words into the operations of Nigeria's tax collector, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, they appear to take on absolutely new meaning. Now, have you ever considered paying tax right from the comfort of your own home, say, maybe right after dinner? Well, I never thought those days were near. You're watching Nigeria going beyond oil. I am Christy Kolpukwola. Welcome to the show. As part of efforts to bring ICT to the doorsteps of Nigerian taxpayers, the Federal Inland Revenue Service has launched six online tax payment solutions. Let's start by taking a look at how exactly these innovations are expected to function. Reforming Nigeria's tax sector is a priority measure to help reduce the nation's dependence on oil. Some of the objectives of the latest e-services introduced by the FIRS are to get taxpayers off queues, reduce paperwork and put an end to bureaucracy. The tax collector wants to use technology to provide Nigerians with convenient and transparent tax payment processes. If you recall, it's a common knowledge that Nigeria is being rated 169 out of 190 companies, countries, sorry, when it comes to the ease of doing business over the world. <laughs> this government felt that it's not good enough and we felt we needed to do something about it. Uh, beyond that also is the fact that revenue generation all over the world is driven by technology. So these two important points make us to decide to also go digital. FRS has, has had a strategy to modernize and automate and this this is the final stage of that um, the first the first part as stated was to clean up our data to automate our processes in terms of tax in terms of document management in terms of um, email collaboration and other services and having done that we are now in a position to place this e-services on top of the foundation of all the other services. All six online solutions, electronic registration, e-stamp duty, e-tax payment, e-receipts, e-filing and the e-tax clearance certificate essentially mark the start of the migration of Nigerian taxpayers from the manual taxation system to the ultimate destination of the FIRS, an electronic taxation system in line with global best practices. The, the intent is to increase the tax base. The intent is to make it easy for everyone to access and, and make it easy for them to make payments. For the e-registration, taxpayers can register and be authenticated on the FIRS portal. Then they can access the e-services tab with their tax identification number. They will promptly receive a security pin to complete the authentication process. It reduces, you know, the cumbersome nature of getting the taxpayers registered. You know, part of our agenda or part of our goal is to obviously broaden the tax net, getting more citizens, working class citizens in the tax net. By improving the tax net, we improve our revenue, making it easier to do something as simple as registration, getting your TIN automatically. That, those things, are, that's the first step or well, that's the foundation to the basis of engaging with taxpayers. We make that easy, it makes things easier for us as well from monitoring and getting tax payments. In the past, the stamp duty required a physical stamp. But with the electronic option, taxpayers can access the service from office or home. The portal provides a link to download the e-stamp duty certificate and sends a copy of the verifiable receipt to the taxpayer's email people having issues of the manual process of going to the bank, waiting for the receipts to be ready, and them needing it for their own, you know, reconciliations. Now with the e-stamp duty, they can get it online, they can print it out, they can validate it, they can, you know, that just makes it so much easier to, oh, and in, they get it instantly. 
And that's a, one, one thing that, you know, in the past they'd have to wait and wait and wait. The e-tax payment operates through three platforms which enable customers to make payments. Nibs e-bills pay, Remita and Quick Teller. That, what it made better was that in the past you'd go to the bank, make a payment, you know, get a receipt, come back to FIRS and show proof of payment. But with the e-tax platform, you go to our website, you make a payment, you get your receipts automatically, your payments are engaged automatically with FIRS. You don't have to get up and go to the bank. You can do it at the convenience of your home or your office. So that's also a driving efficiency for, for um, the taxpayers. With such receipts, taxpayers can confirm if their withholding tax or VAT payment have been remitted to the government. This is in line with standard instruction that withholding tax deduction or value-added tax payment must be remitted once a month before the 22nd day of each month. And e-receipts, this is one that's really, really, really good, this initiative. For this one, you know, you'd go on the e-receipts and the e-tax clearance receipts. You can go online, you can print them, you can use your phone on a barcode to validate them. In the past, what you do is exactly like the others, you'd wait manually to get a receipt or you'd have to get clearance from above before you get your tax clearance certificates. But now with this initiative, you can get it emailed to you, you get an alert on a text, you can also ver validate it for other agencies trying to validate that these uh, receipts are valid, they can verify it with the tax, um, with the QR codes. So that's also a very, very big initiative of transparency and collaboration with um, other agencies such as like um, BPP. The e-filing reduces the compliance burden of taxpayers and reduces leakages by allowing users to upload and file returns for all taxes. It also provides a document number automatically. So e-filing, this is our bread and butter, filing, you know, the filings for our taxpayers. Now they can do it at the comfort of online versus, you know, having to go to the particular tax office where they are registered. You know, sometimes people move, offices, business move, locations change. It becomes difficult and cumbersome to, to travel to the tax office where you're registered. But with, with the e-filing, you can do it from the comfort of your office or your home. You don't have to wait to go to uh, another office or, you know, drive or commute. So just taking away that extra step and making things a little bit more convenient for the taxpayer and making it ease of doing business with FIRS. The sixth electronic solution, the e-tax clearance certificate, enables taxpayers to not only request their TCC from anywhere, but also have it validated. It's part of, well, you know, our tax clearance certificates. So this is what companies use as the basis of them saying, I've paid my taxes and I'm compliant. Now, where that is important is that in the past, you know, you'd go through the process of going to a tax office, show proof of your payments and things like that, get your e-tax clearance after like management has reviewed and sent to you manually. This process, this eliminates, it, it brings in authenticity. They can do their payments and processing online and get their e-TACC mailed to them via email or via, they'll get a text alert. All six e-services are free and accessible to all taxes payable to the FIRS, including the Petroleum Profits Tax, Companies Income Tax, Value Added Tax, among others, 24 hours every day. Benefits of the electronic services have been highlighted to include fostering transparency and, of course, increased revenue generation. After the break, we'll take a look at changes to respect and, of course, the tax collector's anticipated responses. You're watching Nigeria Going Beyond Oil. You're watching Nigeria going beyond oil. We have been looking at the e-services newly launched by the Federal Inland Revenue Service. 
Introducing such changes to a system will definitely raise question of adaptability. Now, how prepared is the FIRS to tackle such challenges internally, say, with regard to staff and externally in respect of taxpayers? For the tax collector, staff training and consistent stakeholders' engagements are the two key approaches so far adopted. Special advisor to the FIRS chairman, Abiodun Aino, says these mitigation steps had been long factored in as part of the organization's plans to ensure smooth implementation of the e-services strategies. Typically, people are used to the way they are doing things and they would rather continue that way. But we know that the only thing that brings development is change. So the first challenge is to get people's buying in into it and that we have our own plans on how to achieve that. The second, of course, is the fact that um, we also need to educate them on how to use those innovations as well. Um, in terms of implementation, it's just to get um, taxpayers, the general public, and the user of those innovations to understand how it works. We've done a collocation of our data center to a tier three data center where we've been guaranteed 99.9 .9 uptime for connectivity, for our servers, for all our critical applications and data. So we've covered it from that end. And then from the end of our internet and connectivity, we've consolidated to about four vendors who provide us primary and secondary links so that well, we have total coverage and redundancy between our main headquarters, our data center, primary data center, and our d disaster recovery center. So we would want to see over the next one year that we are driving a KPI for every single staff in FRS to understand that these systems exist, understand that these channels are to be supported by all staff, and, and make sure that the public is sensitized and informed, and when the service is sought or used by the public, it works efficiently, irrespective of with which member of staff of FRS it's, it's um, supposed to reside with. So that's, that's for us is what is the next stage, that these systems are effectively adopted and efficiently operated so that people get the right quality of service. The Director of Procurement, Francis Okora, for handled the Revenue Accounting Department for about a decade. She says Nigerians will be excited about having options which simplify the country's tax payment processes. Once taxpayers begin to experience ease of payment, revenues are expected to go up. When there are new ideas, usually, of course, there will be resistance at first. But Nigerians are also, many of them are enlightened. And they want things that are, you know, best for them. Enlightenment, of course, you will bring to bear so that the Nigerians will know what is happening. And I don't think any person will see a system where it will be easier for you to operate and reject it. The FIRS's aggressive nationwide sensitization campaigns cover both big and small taxpayers in specially targeted proportions. We don't think it's right to push down things through the throat of these taxpayers. So we engage all groups, the big, the small and the medium. The number of companies to be enforced will reduce, that compliance level will improve. While the e-commerce initiatives come with benefits and anticipated initial setbacks, financing around 41.8% of the country's budget is no small feat. Hence, the need for the FIRS to widen its tax net. Currently, reports from the country's Joint Tax Board show that only 14 million out of the estimated 69.9 million Nigerians are economically active and paying tax going into segments where deducting a source from the transport group, where deducting a source with, technology, uh, with um, telecom, aviation. There's so many segments, you know, where deducting uh, directly, you know, their taxes from. So with all this, normally we couldn't have reached that if not, you know, technology. So with all these VAT deductions at a source, you know, there are more revenue you know, get into the government. Compliance levels will improve. Um, tax payments and tax filing 
will be more convenient to the taxpayers because from their bedrooms, offices, houses, they can do transactions rather than going to the banks and they can print out all they used to go and get manually from their desk. The cost of doing business will also reduce. They, do, they don't need to run transportation costs to get those things. So I think generally it will improve compliance levels. We have more satisfied taxpayers. We're also going to have the volume of taxes increasing. The only way we can move, do 40, achieve that VAT volume is that we automate our processes. Manual collection cannot take us far. So we are looking at automation and major segments of the Nigerian economy have been automated for this purpose. Benefits aside, the drawbacks that come with technology adoption may have implications for manual labor and job security of staff. Will the FIRS consider downsizing as the e-services gain more ground? I, I don't think so. There are advanced countries that are much more advanced technologically than us and you still discover a lot of women are still getting the work done. It's not going to be different in FRS. Basically when you use any of these solutions, it pushes you to the back end. So what that does is that our staff therefore go back to process all the information that you have inputted online. So it has not taken the job away. What is really done is to allow our staff to focus in a quiet and serene environment to process all your requests. And so the job is still there for them. What like it has done basically, like you said, it's just to improve efficiency and to make it more importantly comfortable for uh, taxpayers to pay their taxes. So it's more for their convenience, but the staff are still there to do all the processing. The machine will not do everything. And so humans are still involved and they will continue to be involved in all our um, engagements. The of all these e-services comes support, which is a good thing. It, for our staff, we now start supporting our stakeholders, and we've got two. Internal stakeholders, which are departments and department heads and units, and external stakeholders, which are the taxpayers. So this help desk is what we're going to create a center of excellence where you can call up FIRS and seek advice, get information about taxation, about the processes, issues, logs. And what that does is it's also going to give us a look from a point of service delivery. So the staff are going to be adequately engaged and um, we're going to continue focusing on our core business, which is generating revenue and increasing the tax net. Without doubt, the FIRS rates the introduction of the six online solutions highly and has huge expectations for the Nigerian tax sector. But then let's take a closer look at how easily or how quickly our customers expected to quickly respond in terms of immediate implications for their businesses. Adetola Aibangbe is an associate director with the Tax, Regulatory and People Services with KPMG Advisory Services. She evaluates the six online initiatives from the taxpayer's perspective and insists that the FIRS must endeavor to register non-resident companies and take steps to ensure protection of consumers' data. One of the things about taxation in Nigeria is that it's been extremely difficult you know, um, to pay taxes, you know, and the government has been, I'm, I'm sure you've been aware that the government has been doing a lot of effort in, ease, in the ease of paying taxes. And I think this is one thing that has brought it forth. And I know our clients are very much appreciative of doing this at the click of a button. They can now pay their taxes, they can file their returns, and they can also have their receipts issued to them. Tell us, which of the initiatives particularly excite you? The e-registration. The e-registration is about, you know, you getting registered, the ease of registration of a taxpayer. So I think that's something that is exciting. However, one thing I would say that is still missing here and we en um, employ on the FRS to work on is registration for non-resident companies. Because there's some non-resident companies doing business in Nigeria, but the platform is not yet robust enough you know, to bring them to register. So we think that's something that I understand that it's already something the tax, um, the FRS is looking to do, and we hope that that comes on up, upstream quickly. Now, your office specifically deals with tax regulatory and people services. To what extent do you think people are actually open to embracing such procedural changes within a system? I would say, Christy, people are very open. As you're aware, technology is here to stay. 
and it's, it's an easier way to do business. So for our clients that we work with on a daily basis, they embrace technology, they're willing to use the platform, but the concerns as to data privacy, there are also concerns as to confidentiality and data security. So I want to believe that the FIRS is doing enough, you know, by ensuring that the sites are secure and protect, you know, clients' data. What expectations do you have in terms of impact? I think it's about stakeholder engagement and I'm very proud of them that they're doing that because what that does is as well is as they listen more to people, they're able to go back to improve, you know, the system, to improve be it, you know, the portal and to make it more robust that there needs to be more, more of such engagement across every sector. And we hope that that's one thing that the FRS has put into its calendar to ensure that this is done constantly. With the introduction of e-services comes uh, the natural question or the issue of a possible downsizing. I did take up the FIRS on that and they were of the opinion that this would purely be an issue of machine enhancing human efficiency. Do you agree? Absolutely, Christy. Qu skills are going to evolve and for us we think that um, it's the way to go. Technology, we have to embrace technology, be it from the regulators or even be it with companies and organizations. In KPMG, for example, we have a very big and robust technology advisory practice, you know, just to position ourselves as skills evolved in the next year, few years. Of the six online strategies, the e receipt has been a particular hot topic with uh, uh, customers uh, stating issues of manual, uh, of, of preference for manual receipts as opposed to the e receipts. What's your opinion on this? Every new thing that has been introduced, it takes time. It takes um, effort and it also takes continuous engagement. So what I would say to a lot of people is um, we need to embrace it. It's here to stay. Um, it's more user friendly. You can, at the click of a button, print your receipt, track your payment, know what your tax status is and also get your TCC. So I would say while I recognize that it's difficult for change, but I think it's something we should embrace as we go into the future. And I would say to, to the tax authorities as well, you know, concerning the, concern, um, concerning the issues that people have, actually with respect to privacy, they need to do a lot of work in assuring taxpayers that their site is secure. They need to do a lot of work as well in training their own staff to ensure that staff are, ready, staff are embracing the e-culture and that um, the staff are willing to take or collect from clients who don't have hard copies of documents as evidence going forward. The FIRS insists on addressing data security risk issues while allaying the taxpayers' fears have remained on its priority list. Other major landmarks on the map showing the way forward are ensuring compliance, blocking leakages, reforming Nigeria's tax system, and above all, guaranteeing ease of doing business. This is the way forward. Every MDA relating in this administration are focusing on ease of doing business for their services. So FIRS is just doing their own part in order to align with that global initiative. I mean, uh, the acting president is driving this PEBEC, which is part of the ease of doing business. We have outside agencies such as World Bank coming to see how efficient we're working, to putting in the right initiatives to drive you know, efficiency, transparency and convenience to the people that we're servicing, trying to move us from our index point of where we are in the World Bank positioning of ease of doing business in Nigeria, you know, things such as registering a company, things such as registering and paying your taxes, how efficiently are they, you know, these are all the mandates that were given to us from above. And FRS is poised and ready to take on that initiative. Well, we're on track. This is, this is the final stage to automation, or almost the final stage. We'll always make improvements. So we want to capture the balance. The other is that unless we have compliance across the board, then the few people who pay tax will always feel cheated by those who don't. And those who don't will, will never understand the full burden of being citizens of a country. So this, this is um, a necessary step in national development, not just tax, taxation and revenue. The initiatives are live. 
and the general public can go ahead and engage us. All this is accessible through our website. You go to frs.gov.ng and go to e-services tab and all of these services are listed there. Um, with respect to this compared to you know, sister agencies in other countries, world developed countries like America and so, so on and so forth, this puts us in the right step, or in the right direction in getting to, to attaining those levels of compliance, level of convenience, level of transparency and definitely the number one thing for me, level of collaboration. Because this, like example, the registration, it collaborates and integrates with like CAC. So when a company registers, they automatically go through our process and get a TIN. The Nigerian tax environment can do a bit better, but clearly we are not where we were before. We've moved forward and there's still room for a lot of improvement, but clearly we've moved ahead. Um, years back, everything is done manually, but today that has changed. In the comfort of your home, you can file your tax return. When you make payments now, you get automatic e receipts from the comfort of your home. You can print it out. Embassies and government agencies or any users that want to verify tax grant certificate do not have to come to FRS. So while we are not where we want to be, we still continue to improve, but we've since moved from where we used to be. So if you ask me, I would say we are not doing badly. With matching up to global best practices, widening the tax net to up revenues, and making tax payment attractive as the main objectives, the newly introduced e-services of the Federal Inland Revenue Service are pair solidly positioned to win. Innovation, reinvention, communication and compassing stakeholders engagement have been highlighted by Nigeria's Federal Inland Revenue Service as its roadmap to its ultimate destination. The experts agree. And that's our show for today. I am Christy Kopukwala. Thank you for watching. Keep the conversation going by leaving your comments on our Facebook page, Nigeria Going Beyond Oil, or follow my Twitter at Christy Kopukwala. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.